Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. The Woman in Red is a 1984 American comedy film directed by and starring Gene Wilder. Wilder also wrote the script. It co-stars Charles Grodin, Gilda Radner, and Kelly LeBrock. The storyline follows a San Francisco, California man who is without a doubt a doting family man known as Theodore Pierce. His whole life, he has only had eyes for his caring wife, but he doesn't realize that he wants a dash of adventure in his uneventful existence. After all, things happen, people change, and being faithful as a dog can be tiring. And then, in his company's quiet underground parking lot, a statuesque brunette bombshell in a billowy silk dress catches Theodore's eye. Tall and amazingly sexy, this leggy temptress has an irreversible, life-altering effect on this unguarded man. Now tame Theodore is Teddy, and he craves more. But it's been ages since Teddy played the delightfully addictive game of love. And as Teddy embarks on his exciting four-week quest to taste the forbidden fruit, he's about to find himself neck deep in a whole lot of trouble. You get the joy of seeing the amazingly talented Gilda Radner in their production. This movie was the second of three collaborations between her and Gene Wilder. The other films were Hanky Panky from 1982 and Haunted Honeymoon from 1986. While in France to promote this film, the pair took a brief break from their professional duties and quietly married. Gilda was one of the original cast members of the Not Ready for Primetime Players on NBC's Saturday Night Live. In her routines on SNL, she specialized in parodies of television stereotypes, such as advice specialists and news anchors. But sadly, in 1989, she died from ovarian cancer. And in her autobiography, she dealt frankly with her life, her work, and her personal struggles, including the struggles with this illness. After her death, Gene Wilder carried out her wish that information be spread about her illness so that it could be used to help other cancer victims. The movie has been memorable in one aspect due to its theme tune, I Just Called to Say I Love You, sung by Stevie Wonder, which won the Academy Award for Best Song. The soundtrack was also composed by Wonder, and also featured performances by Dionne Warwick. The movie is the debut role and breakthrough film for Kelly LeBrock. LeBrock began her career as a model at the age of 16 in her adopted city of New York. Her big breakthrough came at the age of 19, where she starred in a 24-page spread in Vogue magazine. Shortly after that, she entered into a contract with Christian Dior. She subsequently appeared on numerous magazine covers and in fashion spreads and became one of Ford's most sought-after models. She was also really associated with the shampoo called Pantene, where she was a commercial spokesman with her famous catch line, Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. This was Gene Wilder's most successful film as a director at the box office. Melanie Griffith was offered the role of Charlotte in the film, but she turned it down in order to play in Brian De Palma's Body Double from 1984 also. The film blatantly uses the famous Marilyn Monroe dress flying above the street grate from the seven-year itch, but it exchanged the color from white to red. This image was the dominant one used in the film's press and marketing materials, particularly the movie posters. The production wasn't the first to use this in recent times. 
as the Barbara Streisand comedy All Night Long from 1981 had used it also, where Streisand is seen climbing up a pole wearing a violet dress with three male characters beneath her. Some of the movie posters for the production featured a preamble that read, Shy, quiet Teddy Pierce wanted a little adventure, and one day it walked into his life in a red silk dress. Now his wife is packing a gun, his friends are going nuts trying to cover for him, and he's about to get caught with his pants down on the 6 o'clock news. Be very careful of what you want, because you just might get it. Kelly LeBrock's character of Charlotte has an apartment in the building at 1000 Mason Street, North Beach, San Francisco. This is where Wilder's character gets caught outside the window. This is the same apartment building used in Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo from 1958. It's where Kim Novak's character lives and where James Stewart's character Scotty follows her in the beginning of the movie. Now, this movie is the only movie where Kelly LeBrock does a nude scene in her career. And she does it big time. It's a full frontal shot, although it's very brief. It was still the talk around the water cooler on Monday mornings. After this, she decided not to bear her body in more films after her children were born. She didn't want her children to one day think of their mother as an actress with only a mouth, large breast, and legs. And not only did she give up nude scenes, she gave up Hollywood. For the past 25 years, after her divorce from Steven Seagal, she's been living in the wilderness. She says that she's not a Hollywood girl. She doesn't like all that attention, and she wants to have dirt under her nails and be in the outdoors. So that's what she did. She's been living on a ranch in the middle of nowhere with no TV or computer at all. She was trying to be the best single mom that she could. And she knew if she wanted to, she could always go back to her career. But she could never go back to raising her children. This production made her a hot commodity in Hollywood, and rightfully so. Take a look back at this lovable Gene Wilder film. It's a fun one. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics 